This is the African News, a broadcast from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante. Top stories. Ethiopia rejects Arab League resolution on the Renaissance Dam. UN board says there is no famine in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Eritrean troops to leave soon, Ethiopia UN envoy. Sudan leader warns of civil war and defense reform. The details of these stories coming up after the break. Stay tuned. You're welcome back from the break to our first story. Ethiopia has rejected an Arab League resolution calling on the United Nations Security Council to intervene in a lingering dispute between Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia over the massive dam Addis Ababa is building on the Blue Nile, the Nile River's main tributary. Foreign ministers of the 22-member bloc met on the Qatari capital Doha on Tuesday in the latest effort by Cairo and Khartoum to reach an agreement on the filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the dirt. Ethiopia is pinning its hopes of economic development and power generation on the dam. Egypt relies on the river for as much as 90% of its fresh water and sees the new dam as an existential threat. Sudan is concerned about the operation of its own Nile Dam and water stations. The Arab League of States should know that utilization of the Nile waters is also an existential matter for Ethiopia, the East African nation's foreign ministry said in a statement. It is about lifting millions of its people out of the object poverty and meeting their energy, water and food security needs. Ethiopia is exercising its legitimate right to use its water resources in full respect of international law and the principle of course no significant harm it had it. We are still in Ethiopia's Tigray region and the UN humanitarian chief says the situation in the Ethiopian region of Tigray is worse than previously thought. Mark Lukok was speaking to a closed session of the Security Council on Tuesday. The BPC has seen a leaked copy of its preparation remarks. Mr. Lukok said rape is being used systematically to terrorize and brutalize women and girls. Eritrean soldiers are using starvation as a weapon of war. Displaced people are being round up, beaten and threatened. Aid workers have been killed, interrogated, beaten, blocked from taking aid to the starving and suffering and told not to come back. The Tigray administration have also reported that from starvation. Mr. Lukok, on the other hand, suggested that this recent assessment of food security in Tigray, which spoke of a catastrophe, might be underestimating the gravity of the situation. He describes multiple reports of young men and teenagers taken, usually at night and in some casual, executed. It is now clear that Eritrean defense forces are responsible for the substantial violations of the international humanitarian rule. It is now clear that Eritrean defense forces are responsible for substantial violations of the international humanitarian law. Despite some success in delivering aid to the region, Mr. Lukok stated that millions of people in urgent need of help are simply not getting any. The response is still not yet coming close to keep pace with the mountain needs. We move to Eritrea now and Eritrean troops have been fighting in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray. We live soon in Ethiopia's ambassador to the UN has said. Taye Selassie Made said it was a matter of sorting out some technical and procedural issues regarding when they could leave, the Reuters News Agency reported. The ambassador said there was commitment from the Ethiopian government and the Eritrean are very clear as well, the AP news agency quoted him saying. He spoke after the UN Security Council meeting in which outgoing UN humanitarian chief Mark Lukok said no one should be surprised to see the run of the 1984 devastating famine if violence does not stop and the Eritrean troops do not withdraw. Last week, the UN aid chief said there was Famine in northern Ethiopia after the release of a UN backed analysis of the situation. Tigray has been devastated by a humanitarian crisis since fighting began in November 2020 between government forces and rebels. Thousands of people are thought to have been killed 
and about 1.7 million people displaced from their homes. The seven-month-old conflict in Tigua have seen all those involved, including Eritrean soldiers accused of gross rights violations such as rape and extrajudicial killings. We move to Sudan and Sudan's Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok has warned that there is a risk of the country descending into chaos and civil war and blamed loyalists of the former administration. He said the reforms has been implemented were meant to improve the economy. The latest removal of subsidies on fuel sparkled protects in the country. The deterioration of the security situation is mainly linked to the fragmentation between the component of the revolution, which left a vacuum exploitation by its enemies and element of the former regime. Mr. Hamdok was quoted by the Reuters new agency as saying, Sudan has been praised for economic reform since the outest of the former president Omar al-Shabaab in 2019. There has, however, been food shortages linked to prolonged conflict and natural disaster like droughts and famine in Sudan. Thank you so much for joining me. This is where I draw the curtains on African news. It's always a pleasure serving you. My name is Sandra Asante. I'll see you some other time.